Something interesting has been happening quietly over the last year and most people didn't notice it at first. New Linux users, the kind who usually bounce off after a week and go back to Windows or Mac OS, are not only sticking around, they're actively recommending one specific Linux distro to other beginners. Not because it's trendy, not because it's powerful on paper, but because, for the first time, Linux is no longer asking beginners to adapt to it. It's adapting to them. And that shift changes more than just personal computers. It changes how companies onboard employees, how schools teach computing, and how the future Linux user base is being shaped right now. At first glance, nothing seems dramatic. There's no flashy announcement, no viral launch event, no bold claims that this distro will replace Windows or kill Mac OS. In fact, many experienced Linux users initially ignored it, assuming it was just another beginner-friendly experiment that would fade away. But something unexpected started happening in forums, in Reddit threads, in Discord servers, and even inside corporate IT departments. People who had never used Linux before were not asking how to fix things. They were asking how to go deeper. That's unusual. Historically, beginners on Linux asked survival questions. How do I install drivers? Why doesn't my Wi-Fi work? How do I install software without breaking my system? Those questions usually appear within the first 48 hours. But with this distro, the early conversations look different. They sound more like curiosity than confusion. People ask how the system works under the hood because nothing has gone wrong yet. And when nothing goes wrong, something important changes in the user's mind. Linux stops feeling like a fragile experiment and starts feeling like a dependable tool. What makes this even more interesting is who is switching. These aren't just hobbyists or tech enthusiasts. Many are people coming from lockdown corporate laptops, students who have only ever known Chromebooks, freelancers who live inside browsers and cloud apps, and even small businesses looking for cost stability. They aren't switching because they want to learn Linux. They're switching because they want their computer to stop getting in the way of their work. This is where the story becomes less about a distro and more about a shift in priorities. For decades, Linux development was driven by power users. Flexibility mattered more than approachability. Choice mattered more than clarity. And while that created an incredibly powerful ecosystem, it also created an invisible barrier at the entrance. Beginners felt like guests in someone else's house. This distro quietly changed that dynamic. It feels like it was designed assuming the user doesn't want to think about operating systems at all. When beginners first install it, the experience doesn't try to impress them. There's no overwhelming customization panel, no flood of options asking them to make decisions they don't understand yet. Instead, the system behaves in a way that feels predictable. Apps open quickly. Updates happen without drama. Hardware works without rituals. And most importantly, nothing about it constantly reminds the user that they're on Linux now. That psychological detail matters more than most people realize. When users are constantly reminded they're using something different, they remain cautious, they hesitate, they avoid exploring. But when the system fades into the background, confidence grows naturally. That confidence is what keeps people from leaving after the first inconvenience. Behind the scenes, this distro made a controversial choice that many traditional Linux users criticized at first. It prioritized defaults over options. Instead of presenting endless configuration paths, it locked in sensible decisions that work for the majority of people. That sounds restrictive until you see the result. Beginners don't want to assemble an operating system. They want something that feels complete on day one. Another subtle but critical reason beginners are switching is how software is handled. For years, Linux software installation has been powerful but fragmented. Different package managers, different formats, different repositories, different philosophies. For experienced users, this is manageable. For beginners, it's chaos disguised as freedom. This distro takes a firm stance on how apps should be installed and updated, and while purists complain, beginners benefit massively. There's one clear way to get software, one clear way updates behave, and one clear expectation of stability. That stability has consequences far beyond personal laptops. Small companies have noticed that onboarding new employees onto this system requires almost no training. There are fewer IT tickets. Fewer my computer broke after an update moments. Fewer distractions from actual work.
It's in environments where time equals money that matters more than ideological purity. Interestingly, this distro doesn't market itself aggressively. There are no loud claims about being the best or fastest. Instead, it relies on something far more powerful. Word of mouth from people who didn't expect Linux to work this smoothly. When someone who struggled with computers for years says this just works, others listen. Dot. Especially when that person isn't trying to sound technical. Another factor that often goes unnoticed is how this distro handles mistakes. Because beginners will make them. They'll install things they shouldn't. They'll click the wrong buttons. They'll interrupt updates. Older Linux systems often punish these mistakes harshly. This one is more forgiving. Recovery tools are built in. Rollbacks are simple. The system is designed with the assumption that users are human, not system administrators. That design philosophy is why beginners aren't just switching to Linux, they're staying. Staying is what changes ecosystems. A user who stays long enough eventually becomes an advocate. Eventually they recommend it to someone else. Eventually they bring it into a workplace or a classroom. That's how slow, quiet adoption turns into a long-term shift. Now here's where things get even more interesting. It's advanced users who initially dismiss this distro are starting to revisit it. Not because it's powerful in the traditional sense, but because it's reliable. When your system never breaks, you stop thinking about it. And when you stop thinking about it, you focus on your actual work. That's a form of productivity that benchmarks don't capture. There's also a strategic reason this distro is succeeding where others failed. It doesn't try to replace Windows or Mac OS by copying them. It borrows familiar ideas where they help and ignores them where they don't. The result feels modern without feeling like an imitation. Beginners don't feel lost, but they also don't feel like they're using a knockoff of something else. From an enterprise perspective, this matters a lot. Companies don't want endless customization. They want predictability. They want updates that don't change workflows overnight. They want security improvements without visual chaos. This distro's update philosophy is conservative in the best way possible. Changes are deliberate. Breaking changes are rare. When they happen, they're communicated clearly. This approach builds trust, not just with users, but with organizations. Trust is the hardest thing to earn in operating systems, and once lost, almost impossible to regain. Beginners sense this trust, even if they can't articulate it. They feel safer experimenting because the system has proven itself stable. One of the most telling signs of this shift is what beginners are no longer asking. They're not constantly searching for best Linux distro for beginners after installing it. They're not hopping between distros every month. They've stopped distro hopping before it even began. That's almost unheard of in the Linux world. And while this distro doesn't prevent advanced customization, it hides that power until the user is ready. It's like a door that stays closed until you're curious enough to open it. That's a smarter onboarding path than throwing everything at the user on day one. There's also an emotional element that rarely gets discussed. Beginners feel respected by the system. It doesn't lecture them. It doesn't assume they want to learn command line tools immediately. It doesn't make them feel inferior for preferring graphical interfaces. That respect creates loyalty. As more beginners stick with Linux through this distro, the ecosystem around it grows. App developers pay attention. Documentation improves. Support communities become more welcoming. And over time, the entire Linux landscape becomes more beginner-friendly, even beyond this one distro. That's the real long-term impact. What we're witnessing isn't a sudden revolution. Oh. It's a slow realignment. Linux is no longer just an operating system you grow into. For many people, it's becoming the operating system they start with and never feel the need to leave. That changes the future user base dramatically. By the time most people realize what's happening, the shift will already be complete. Beginners won't be trying Linux anymore. They'll just be using it. And this distro will be remembered as the one that made that possible, not through hype or complexity, but through restraint. In the end, beginners are switching to this Linux distro for a simple reason that took decades to fully understand. Power means nothing without trust. Freedom means little without stability. Choice only matters when you're confident enough to explore it. This distro quietly delivers all three, in the right order, at the right time. That's why, long after the excitement fades and trends move on, this one will still be there. It's quietly running, quietly growing, and quietly redefining what it means to be a beginner on Linux.